Hello everyone, so we've been overdue for a technical video and I've been struggling to come up with exactly what I wanted to go over this time. But what we're going to get into is one that's pretty technical and super annoying, drives everyone mad, but it's not as complicated as most people think it is. It just can mess your world up if it's done wrong. So let's dive into that, shall we? So what I'm talking about is of course prism lenses. And what I mean by they can absolutely rock your world is, you see that, right? We're moving that image pretty dramatically one direction. Now, this is 10 diopters of prism, so it's a very, very dramatic effect. Works great for video to show you what we're talking about. Now, the way this works in general, prism glasses move the image where it strikes the eye in this case. You can see it shifts depending on which direction this is facing. So the image is deviated towards the base and that works out a little bit differently in the actual perception. And that gets really fun to explain. But what it amounts to, if you see double vision, this is the most often prescribed type of lens to fix that because it lets you fuse the two eyes and image back into one. In this case, we're taking one image and making it two because obviously the single lens from the camera does not have double vision. So we can't correct that and fix that. Now, to keep making your head spin, you'll see right there, you can actually use this same concept to move where the eye looks. Now, occasionally they'll be used in this way for cosmetic purposes. So if you have a prosthetic eye and it's either down a little bit, up a little bit, in, out, whatever, it just doesn't sit largely level to the way you would think, or if there's some sort of other cosmetic issue that's causing that, you can use prism lenses to actually shift and make that symmetrical. In my case, I have one, so I've got 31 and 33, one's about two millimeters out. You can actually calculate the exact amount of prism needed to really mess up your world by putting that in front of your eye, but you can actually, there you go. So you can actually make it more symmetrical. Of course, in my case, that makes me look like I have double vision anyways, because that makes this eye drift out. And that's a whole other fun story. But as far as prism lenses, these often make lenses a little bit thicker, especially when you get into something that's 10 diopters, because you can see even in this really small 40, 35 something millimeter round disc, you still have a significant amount of thickness. Now that is 10 diopters. Typically what we work with is anywhere from two to three diopters. On occasion, you'll get up into the 10, 12 range. The most I've personally worked with has been about 15, 16, somewhere in that range. And then you get into some pretty complex stuff because you have to adjust. Remember, I said the image is moved, right? So where the eyes are, that placement matters for the new lenses being made because we still want that lie light to fall on the retina in the right place. Otherwise, it's going to be out of focus, you're going to struggle to see, and things just don't end well. Prism glasses are kind of the epitome of what makes us a professional, and of course you can induce prism with stronger prescriptions anyway. So there's a lot that goes into this that a lot of people really don't quite grasp, sometimes even the people doing it. It happens. It's a lot of complex stuff to keep up with, but most people try their best anyways. Now, I mentioned there are a lot of different uses for this. We've talked about two already. Of course, the main one being double vision, the secondary being kind of a cosmetic purpose. But also, occasionally the eyes don't quite work perfectly together and we don't really perceive it. The brain fuses the image anyways. A lot of ODs are now checking for this when they do their exam. They'll do a quick little one-two thing with the prism lenses, just like they would with the regular refraction for the spherical and cylindrical components. And you might be surprised to find that that actually can dramatically increase the comfort of vision, but in some cases can actually be used to give you better depth perception, which we call stereopsis. Basically, the fusing of the two images from the location of the eyes is what creates depth perception. So the way that our eyes actually cross and create that image of convergence, our brain is able to interpret that and create depth, which is kind of cool, or at least I think it is. 
but occasionally you'll have what happens at a younger age. You'll have one eye that just slightly diverges, creating two images that don't really converge. So you don't have depth perception. Sometimes that can't be restored later in life. Sometimes it can. It really just depends on when it's found. And some people, like in the case of my wife, they actually just freak out when that happens. I was the one that figured that out for her, so that was fun. Oh, back in my days of being a tech and doing refractions and all that fun stuff. Now I just handle this side, which has its own fun perks. But anyways, so that's kind of a few fun things we can do with Prism. There's a lot more to it. It's much more involved than this. But I don't want to bore you guys to death too much, so I'll leave you with that for now, and we'll get on to some more fun next time around. Now, if you liked this video, let me know your feedback down below, like, comment. If you don't already subscribe, definitely subscribe. I'll leave some links down below for some other stuff you can check out, a little bit more reading and more fun things along those lines. Otherwise, I will catch you guys next time.